All right. We are a little after 5.30, so I'll call tonight's EDA meeting to order. And Karen, can we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Husnick? Here. Commissioner Large? Here. Commissioner Larson? Here. Commissioner Grindall? Here. Commissioner Hoyt? Here. And President Bain? Here. I'd like to invite everyone to rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. <clears throat> Members of the EDA, so first, welcome. This is our first meeting with our newly seated EDA members, so I want to welcome everybody and thank you for your service to our community. Um, tonight we have an agenda before you. I will entertain a motion to approve tonight's agenda or any changes. I move we approve tonight's agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Oppose and our agenda is approved. Our next item this evening is to approve our minutes from our regular meeting, which was November 14th, 2022. This first meeting um, is always a little bit awkward because you are approving the minutes from our last EDA, which you were not members of, and you are able to either abstain or to approve if you are comfortable in doing so. You don't actually have to be at a meeting to participate in this vote, um, but our first um, action item this evening is to approve those minutes. And with that, I would move that we approve the minutes from the November meeting, November 14th meeting. Is there a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Oppose. Any abstentions? I'll abstain. We have one abstention. Very good. Moving on, our next item is consideration of the boat launch relocation evaluation and downtown shoreline concept. And um, Dan, I think you're starting yep. us off. And then we've also got Bruce here as well. Uh, President, members of the EDA, um, just to provide a little context for this item uh, for the boat launch relocation evaluation and downtown shoreline concept design proposal. Um, this was originally or initially discussed back in November at the last EDA meeting. Uh, the EDA did consider this proposal. Um, there was some feedback at that time to take a look and kind of split it out into two projects, um, which is reflected in the, um, the proposal that's included in your packet tonight. Um, just bear in mind that this is an important next step in the downtown plan implementation is by continuing to kind of evaluate uh, the boat launch relocation and also what we can do with the shoreline there in downtown. Um, we do have Bruce here uh, who uh, from Kuali to discuss the proposal and also really to kind of discuss the deliverables that are uh, going to be a result of this uh, study. And he also is here to answer any questions that the EDA may, may have regarding the proposal. And with that, I'll turn it over to Bruce to go through the uh, proposal. Thanks, Dan. Hi, everyone. I'm Bruce Chamberlain uh, with Talali Collaborative. I'm a landscape architect and have been working with communities for a long time on their community development work, whether it's public lands, working with communities on redevelopment projects with private developers, um, and so on. And actually, I'm going to show you just very briefly uh, a process and an effort that I was a part of for about 20 years with the city of Mound, uh, beginning with a downtown plan and then carrying that forward into implementation steps over the next 20 years. Um, but I want to talk real briefly uh, first about the, the proposal that we provided to do two things. One is to look at um, relocation of, of the boat launch or possibly just boat parking within the downtown area. As we were going through the downtown plan uh, conducted last year, uh, one of the things that really rose to the top was the challenge that was created from a parking standpoint, from a circulation standpoint, from a use of public land down at the waterfront, um, and the challenges that the boat launch and the associated parking creates with uh, that facility, and whether really wondering at this point whether there are other locations around the lake that could accommodate uh, either both the launch and parking or potentially look at a strategy of remote parking leaving the launch in place. So the first half of the letter that I think you have a copy of um, talks about the services and the, the approach to taking a look at other options for the boat launch. And uh, we call it a study, but essentially it's creating conceptual design, kind of a, a rapid 
look at any possible sites that are out there apart from where it sits today and analyzing how much parking would be possible. Is it really possible to circulate um, trucks or cars and trailers through a site um, <clears throat> coming onto the lake? Is it going to cause conflicts with surrounding land uses? All of the things associated with any site or real estate possibilities for relocating uh, that boat launch or just the parking as well. So that's one aspect of the, the proposal. And <clears throat> the intent is to work with city staff to identify kind of the full scope of possibilities that are out there. Um, so staff will be taking uh, the leadership around analyzing what's out there, what's possible. My role is really to take a look conceptually at uh, the land itself, how much parking could fit, all the circulation demands, all the potential conflicts, and provide um, some uh, expertise around all of that, and then package it up with a series of recommendations about what is possible, what seems to rise to the top as opportunities, um, whether or not you really have options to look both at parking relocation and launch relocation, or whether there are better options for remote parking and leaving the boat launch in place. So that's the first half of the, of the letter that you have. The second half is taking a look at the shoreline. Um, one of the, the catalyst projects that was, that was defined in the plan was to look at the shoreline, create transient boat slips downtown, um, position those slips or docks in a way that um, that conforms or that uh, uh, lifts up the other strategies you want to accomplish with shoreline restoration, whether it's the kayak launch and landing, um, restoration of the shoreline itself, better battering against ice dams and ice flows that come into the park, those kinds of things. So it's doing conceptual design for mm -hmm. the shoreline itself and as part of that conceptual design for uh, the docks or the multi-dock um, transient slips. <clears throat> so that, that is a conceptual design, a budgeting exercise, uh, and potentially a phasing exercise for what pieces of that could go right away, what elements maybe you wanna hold on, um, and how all those components are interrelated logistically. So you've got, um, two, you've got those uh, two components in a proposal letter from me, I'm gonna show you a little bit of um, Mound. I think you can see that on your screen. So this is downtown Mound, circa 1991, something like that. And I began working with the city of Mound in 1990. And uh, at the time they were interested in doing some beautification downtown. And we got into the process of the downtown plan and the community really came to realize that there's more here than just beautification. There's some functional issues that they need to address, some kind of big functional issues that they need to address. And so the downtown plan became much more of a public realm total reconstruction and a redevelopment strategy. So this is 1991. Um, this slide shows what it was in 2010, which, which was about the time that I stopped working with Mound and took a job in the public sector for a number of years. Um, so I spent 20 years with the community acting as their landscape architect, um, downtown redevelopment strategist, and working really closely with staff on all the, the needs that they had. <clears throat> So if you remember, I'll just point out a few things. This was the image from 1997 and then what it became in, uh, by 2010. Um, the crux of it was really restoring a historic canal from Lake Minnetonka to the core of the downtown area, creating a marina, transient slips on the downtown edge, um, reorienting streets. So the, the main uh, county road that travels through Mound. I don't know if you can see my cursor, probably not, but that was relocated, a main street was constructed, and then sites were opened up for redevelopment. <clears throat> so the commitment that the community made in that case was 
uh, to about 20 years from the point they started the downtown plan to the point that they essentially had all of the new public realm and infrastructure in place to support redevelopment. Um, ongoing political will that it took to get to make that happen and then about $30 million that they made or invested in um, in the public realm in order to um, support private development. The yield was about $100 million in private investment, so about three times or so of uh, the public investment. Um, a tenfold increase, it's actually quite a lot more than tenfold, but we'll call it tenfold increase in the property tax yield of the downtown core, um, which I suppose can be looked at uh, a couple of different ways, but uh, one way to look at it is that it reduces the property tax load on the residential uh, homes within the community. And then it really changed the community use perception of its downtown. Um, very negative before uh, they went through this effort. Just going through the process um, gave them more community pride, um, helped them understand how they can engage with their downtown. <clears throat> so that was Mound. The transformation of downtowns really happens in stages. You've started down the path of the first stage and that's doing the master planning, which is to create a vision with the community um, as part of that visioning process. Um, you did a fantastic job in engaging the community through your downtown plan um, to build an, an investment roadmap around that vision. And that's a uh, really strong component of your plan that was adopted. And then adopting it, making it part of the, the policy framework of the community. And that's those are uh, what I think of as the three main components of what a downtown plan is. Um, Second stage is to really work the plan. And I think <clears throat> this um, gets at some of the things that are within um, the proposal letter that you've got for doing those couple of small pieces, but uh, to establish internal project curation and management. So to have someone internal to the community, um, city staff, who is really the, <coughs> the, the keeper and the curator of what's happening downtown to design and implement modest catalyst projects, which are we talked about just a minute ago, those early demonstrations of commitment um, that you're showing both the community and potential outside investors that you are committed to this effort, to build relationships with potential partners and to begin lining up capital, both internal and external, um, for more substantial investments later on. And then to implement in phases uh, is kind of the third big chunk of all of this and to build implementation expertise within your community, um, both at the political level and the staff level to approach partners about getting involved, whether that's funding or support on doing projects that are complicated. Um, there are many ways partners can get involved. Um, to coordinate closely with private and adjacent investments because there are ways to leverage those. Um, and then to do project by project build out. Um, when we look at a downtown plan, it can be a little bit overwhelming because there's so much. But what we've tried to do with your downtown plan and uh, what other communities do with their kind of big perspectives or big plans is to break them down project by project. And this is all about implementing those small pieces that lead up to the broader vision. And to plan on it taking you know, a decade or a little bit more to make this happen. Mound obviously was 20 years um, and they take time. <clears throat> so this is an example, again, going back to Mound. This is the master plan. So the area that's, you know, in color basically uh, that's rendered is the area of, of focus within the downtown core. Phasing strategy was part of the plan. This is actually more of a demonstration of what's underway. This was during construction. Um, and what was already accomplished and what's in the future. And then project pre-design, which is really similar to the, to the um, shoreline work that's in front of you for consideration. Um, doing budgeting or cost estimating of construction, developing concept and concept alternatives, doing due diligence. Sometimes there's soil borings that are required or survey that's required or legal. Um, title work sometimes, depending on the project, 
all of those are part of the due diligence effort. And then uh, doing design development, getting further down the road than just concept so that you're moving into construction documents as soon as you're ready to do so. And then project construction documents, and I have a couple of examples that have these two images in them, but I'll pass those out so you just click through them. Thank you. just handed you are the, uh, one of them is preliminary and one I think is the final construction documents from a long time ago, a project in Mound. Um, and it outlines these, happens to have these two particular sheets in it. Um, but ultimately what you're driving at is to get projects built um, as part of that capital effort of transforming your downtown. Um, and that has all the social implications and all the financial implications of leveraging other people's investments. Um, but that's an example of construction document um, for a particular project, in that case in Mound. This is an example of the, the bids, uh, the bid tab as contracts came in for not this project, but a different project in downtown Mound um, that's publicly bid. And that's probably an important component also when, when cities do work, um, construction documents go out for public bidding and the low bid is the, the winner of that work if the community decides to award the contract. And then construction, um, obviously the construction effort um, is part of uh, what's lined up as part of all of this. And then finally, what gets built. So in this particular case, these images you see on the screen are the result of those construction documents that, are, that you're passing around. Um, so this was uh, transient slips of uh, overlook at the water's edge, um, dredging of the canal, and creation of the public realm or public spaces adjacent to the waterfront. So it has some similarity to what I think you're driving at with transform the transformation of your shoreline. This project is much more extensive probably than you'll get into just because of the, the demands of this effort were really intense. Um, but it has some similarity nonetheless. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, I know I'd walk through that kind of quickly, but I think maybe if there's anything that's uh, most important, it's that these efforts do take time, but you always want to be driving toward that construction effort to have your, your eye as leaders in the community, your eye on the ball and guiding staff and supporting staff and their efforts in conducting the work that's necessary to get those projects built. So that's what I've got for you. Thank you, Bruce. And your um, last comments actually kind of tee into one of my questions. Um, what is your proposed timeline for project one, project two? What does that look like from kind of duration and also just time frame? Yeah, it's about the two of them, if they're combined uh, together as kind of one singular effort, about three months or so. And it probably could be done faster as well, if that's something that's important. But And starting you are you uh, is it uh, ready to start as soon as you are okay yeah so whenever you're ready to to go and if you decide to pursue these um we can jump right in it's up to you members of eda let's just open it up for questions discussion go ahead yeah this question is probably for patrick adan where do we stand with the dnr on permission to move the board yeah, we have to coordinate with the DNR first. We, we have an agreement that they put the first boat dock in. That should be part of the staff process that Bruce talked about. There's, Bruce does and is what we do. So once we get this approved, we'll then also contact the DNR and see what mechanisms we have to go through with them. So they, do they need the alternative, oops, sorry, that you need to present to them when they're considering it? I think we'll have to come up with an alternative first before they'll consider it. I mean, we, we can't go to the DNR and say, we just want to move our boat dock and they'll say, oh, okay, just move wherever you want to. So what they will ask for is, okay, you want to move your boat dock? What are you going to do with the old one? How's that impact? What's the shoreline restoration is going to be involved with that? 
and then, okay, where's the new one going to be? Maybe there's some funding with that that we can get from the DNR, but we have to understand this is really phase, kind of this first step in the DNR is kind of this step 1A, because until we really know where we're going with it, the DNR is not gonna comment really. And I th think we should also keep on the table that not moving it may also be the absolutely. result oh, of the absolutely. study does exactly. one of the options, yeah. right? That mm -hmm. it, we may choose to not move it. <clears throat> yeah. Does that answer your question? I'll just mention also if I could. Yeah, please. Um, that if you get if we get to a point early on in this process where it's a no-go, where the DNR says, and I don't expect this because I just don't expect it, but where they say, you can't move this. We have an agreement in place with you for this launch and this parking facility. Um, you cannot move it. That means I stop and um, I don't bill any more time than whatever preliminary time I put into it. So it's not like, um, you would be paying me for a full study and a full analysis of a bunch of properties if we don't conduct it. So I just wanna mention that. Can I ask, have there been um, locations identified? I know with the community conversations around that, being that I think Mayor Bain, you had mentioned, or maybe you had mentioned that, you know, our boat launch is one of the most heavily used boat launches in the metro area. With the downtown project, we obviously wanna take advantage of that traffic and the potential foot traffic traffic to our downtown area. So moving it much further out of downtown is counterproductive really to revitalizing the downtown, in my mind at least, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So is there a scope around how far out we would be looking for a new location? And is there any, I guess me coming away from that meeting was like, is this even a viable option? And why pursue a spending money on a study if it, there isn't a viable option? Mm -hmm. Whether it's we don't have a location nearby to accomplish the goals we want to accomplish, or um, have we made a couple calls to the DNR to say, I mean, I don't know, to me, I mean, moving that might be kind of a large initiative and they might say right away, no. I mean, before spending the money on a study to move the boat launch. Mm -hmm. I can, Part, you know. sorry, sorry. I, I can add a little bit of background in terms of optional areas we've looked at them informally like nothing's been identified at this point you know to say yes this is you know we looked at some dead-end streets that go down to the lake to say can this possibly be configured in a way for boats to come in turn around in a you know easy fashion so you're not making a launch that's very very difficult to use i used to in a past life worked in a lot of launches and some you have to be a expert in boat trailer back you know, you know to get down in there <laughs> Um, so we have looked at a few that are downtown adjacent, you know, or in downtown. We're not, again, not trying to take these, uh, this traffic and put it, you know, over way, way, way from downtown. Um, so we are looking at that, but that's part of what Bruce will do. We'll look at it, say, if this spot is one that we think just based on our, you know, estimates, this could work, he would run the, can you do a trailer turnaround in there? Where's the parking go? That's part of this analysis. Um, but also to the DNR, we have left messages. I have left messages with DNR saying, Again, is this feasible? You know, because again, I think some of that is some of the concern is as we start going through down this road, if DNR comes back and says, absolutely, you know, Sid, you have to keep it there, then that stops this whole project, which is one of the conversation points back in November yeah. where that wasn't clearly spelled out. Where now it's if we get into this conversation, start looking at this, and we'll know early on in that process when we get back from DNR saying, this is a hard no, we'll stop yeah. this. Project. I, I did read the prior no, so that's where I was kind of going like, let's do a little discovery work first before spending the money on the study. And then I guess with mm -hmm. the location, that's great if you're going to be looking for it, but do we want some guidelines in, turn of, in terms of how far out would we wanna go is acceptable for us <clears throat> to consider a move? So who does that? Determines the, the distance? Who would, who would do this legwork without having the without having the architect vote on it? I don't know, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, so I didn't know. And, and to that point, that staff has started to look at some of those, like, you know, obviously, you know, Bruce could go through and drive through downtown and try to figure out, we have a few spots on a few dead end road that we could say, hey, here's some feasible spots. Can you just do your overlays on this to see if this works or not? Um, it's also gonna come down to at some point, there may be an alternative solution for the boat launch, but the land acquisition cost could be astronomical as well, you know, which could obviously impact, you know, the feasibility of moving it. So there are a few, and I would say the location that 
you know, I've looked at or staff have looked at has been fairly close to downtown, not getting it too far down North Shore Trail or too far south of town at this point, because again, trying to keep that traffic in the downtown but also part of it's not just the launch, it's also other alternative spots to put parking. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the other side. Can you park somewhere across 61? Because again, those accesses do exist as well, where you launch, there's a handful of spots right adjacent to the boat launch, mm -hmm. which are currently there, and then overflow parking gets placed, they placed across 61. Or the, and that's also part of the study too, where can you put alternative boat launch or the trailer parking, which then frees up some of that conflict point that's right adjacent, right, right behind those businesses that are on the north side of the municipal lot, those would then revert back to, you know, one scenario, possibly back to just car parking there and then trailer parking to get moved off site. I definitely see the parking issue is more of the, the larger issue. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. I've, I've got a question. I, I don't know what staff is capable of doing. Um, project two, obviously, I think needs to be, you know, professionally done, but in project one, identifying the locations and the pros and cons of each, is that something that we need to hire out. I mean, Ed, we're going to go a half a mile either side of the downtown, the current location, and look at spots there. And well, I, I think we can identify those spots and probably have already kind of unofficially identified those spots. But like Dan said earlier, okay, if, if this spot is a possibility, how will a boat launch fit in there? How, how will parking fit in there? And that's something that we would need to help on. And also on the costing side of that too, was it, yeah. you know, what is that project gonna cost to move it there? Because again, it's one thing to identify, but then to go through, here's what an access cost would be at land acquisition, rebuild, all those details. So then you get the full picture of moving it from downtown here over to there, cost X. And we wanna make sure that we have a good gauge of what those costs are, because if you underestimate that and you start that project, you don't wanna have to come back with a massive change order halfway through saying, oh, by the way, we forgot this major component of it, which, you know, Bruce has done and has expertise in this type of work before. The um, the pros and cons that we would do with each concept. Let's and it, let's say we're that I'm collaborating or someone whoever you um, bring on to do this work is collaborating with city staff on identifying the possibilities around the lake or within a, a defined area of the lakeshore. Um, and there are five possibilities that are raised. Um, what I would do as part of this effort then is take those five, understand what the, the site parameters or site boundaries are, prepare some conceptual design <coughs> ideas for the launch, circulation, parking, do some analysis of potential conflicts between that facility and surrounding lands, and um, develop a preliminary cost estimate and prepare some really bullet point pros and cons of, of this option. And um, it has to do with cost, the concept, conflicts, all the things that we see with a particular site. And we do that for each one. If there are five, we do it for five. If there are 15, we'll do it for 15. Um, however many possibilities there are. And then also with separating parking from the launch. That's another possibility that we know we're going to be looking at pretty heavily as part of this effort too. Like, how does this affect the boat club and the existing boats? Uh, so the existing, your boat club marina at this point, this boat launch is kind of on a separate track. Um, the Lake Association has talked to DNR, public transient boat docks. So if it comes in and it's not a marina, we're not charging for slip rentals. It's just truly basically lake boat parking. Mm -hmm. That does not have the same size requirements that a marina does because marinas only can be so big and so so many I think square feet of dock and so many so many spots. They're a little bit more lenient on transient boat dock spaces. So the boat launch itself, if it is able to be moved, one of the ideals on the downtown plan was to take the transient boat docks from its current location and put them up where the existing launch was. So there's a, there's a lot of moving pieces sort of long term with how these things come together, which is why we're proposing both projects at one time. The other side of it is say we can't move the boat launch. We'd still would be able to theoretically increase boat, the transient boat docks, just put those in a different location. But we need to make sure that that location is not in conflict with the canoe and you know, the, the stanchions on shore, sort of that non-motorized access thing that we talked about in the downtown plan. So it's almost like two separate 
project which Bruce has identified, but if the boat launch is able to remove transient boats, so it could potentially get moved up there. If we can't move it, we can still look at those transient boat slips just in a different location in Lakeside Memorial Park. That's maybe a, a good segue, Dan. I know the um, Lake Association has an interest in expansion of and kind of doing a project with the city on expansion of those transient boat, boat slips. Um, as I think about this project kicking off and that opportunity being on the table, I'm wondering if there is a way that that consideration of a more immediate investment by the part of the Lake Association, and maybe it's with in partnership with the city, we'll have to see how that works, right? If that, those things could go together, um, you know, one of the things we, we have a large downtown plan that is massively underfunded. And so we've said we need to be, um, you know, take advantage of all the partnership opportunities we can. And so if we've got an important partner coming to the table saying, hey, we'd like to do this, I think we need to <clears throat> find a way to accommodate that and find a way to get timeframes aligned. I, I, I think they're fairly, um, um, you know, they're pretty um, excited to get something started. Um, and so having that worked in, or at least considered as part of this conversation, they seem to fit because again, a big piece to this puzzle is that transient DAP space. And if we've got a partner at the table, I'd like mm -hmm. to find a way to make this scope work with that project. And I know those conversations have just started, but um, if there's a way those, those things could merge, I think it'd be good just, for everybody. Just a couple of things on that. <clears throat> Obviously, if Bruce is the, if you approve this contract, he's had communications with the, the Lake District and, and the downtown plan to begin with, so they're familiar with each other. But also, um, if Bruce also meets his deadline in three months, we'll have a pretty good idea where some of those things may go, and then we may be able to actually act on that, you know, June, July, or something along those lines <clears> and have a better idea if they want to be a willing partner, if that's one of the first things that we can place by identified by whatever the project or whatever the uh, concept Can I just out say one thing? I'm on the Lake Association board, and we are more than happy to give that money to the city for the docks. And I would say, regardless of what hap what really happens, that we would take advantage of that that dock purchase. We agree with that. We just want to make sure that we only put it in one place at one time. That's all. We just want to know where it's going to go before we just plop it in somewhere. So I think that once these concepts come through three months from now, so what's probably May, we'll, we'll know by where that might be, so. And conceptualizing those transient slips and a multi-dock for transient slips is part of this shoreline effort. And I, I do appreciate the, having the broader context. We've, when we've talked many times in the downtown plan that one of our challenges is that we have a lot of a lot of things happening in a very small footprint and in particular related to the transient docks it's right next to the swimming beach and it's right next to where we wanted to do kayak station so mm -hmm. let's find a way to make those things work together but um time also is i think we you know i think it'd be in our interest to be opportunistic of we've got a great partner at the table who wants to see us um see this happen and we've got a massive funding deficit related to this project overall. So whatever we can do to bring those things together, I think is good. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Would it be possible to have like a hypothetical location and he can tell us or explain to us what our needs or wants or it's a no go definitely, or this is something to consider. So like the area of like Northeast 4th Street by O'Connell Funeral Home, where we have the dead end road comes down to the lake we have several lots. I know that's probably prime real estate area, but I don't know if that's something that's a possibility to look. And those are the things that are going to be identified with yeah. with one of the sites that we find, whatever the sites that we locate. And again, we agree that they need to be close or if not into downtown, that's important for us. So yes, we will look at any of those sites that may be possible. And part of the pros and cons of, in the site, for example, that you take into consideration, they may be very valuable pieces of property. They may be very costly for us to, to acquire if that's the place we decide we want to go. So that's the pros and cons that we have to look at. Thank you. One of the things I have learned um, in working with communities on efforts like this is that these kinds of conversations are really important to kind of um, drive to a conclusion because they tend to get talked about sometimes for years and they never quite you never quite under 
we all never quite understand whether it's something that's possible or not. And the idea of this is to hopefully um, do enough analysis to put it to bed one way or the other so that there's a good sense of which direction you can go and what things just are not going to be feasible. Personally, I think the uh, transient boat dock is more important to the downtown as far as people walking and shopping or whatever than the boat launches downtown. Because people coming into the boat, launch their boat or going fishing or whatever, they come back, they're, they're just using that parking space. And uh, so for, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, we need to look at, at the possibilities. It's just, a, it's just we're not going to know until we do the study or some kind of a study. And I'm not capable of doing it, that's for sure. And I don't think anybody in this board is capable of doing it. Not one of us. And so I, I, personally, I mean, we think I'm all for uh, letting Bruce do his thing here and, and uh, moving this thing forward. At least we're going to find out and we're going to know whether or not it's possible. If it's not possible, then we've done our job. And I think the other part of this is that once we get all of the information, we also then will be able to prepare a budget. It will have budget numbers and we'll try to figure out how we fit this. I mean, this looks like the first project involved in the overall downtown development, uh, similar to the, the city that Bruce talked about where they did it in chunks. Well, this might be the first chunk. And so we'll have to figure out, okay, it's gonna cost us X dollars. Where is that going to come from? How are we going to budget it? And then when it's going to be implemented, so. And whether or not there'd be any funding from DNR or, or if there's going to be an issue or whatever, with yeah. the funding they've already given us. And we don't know that stuff until it's studied. It, that's all there is to it as far as I'm concerned. And uh, so, um, you know, this is all, when we did this study, the whole downtown study, it was just one of the items on the list that we wanted to take a really hard look at and try to get it figured out whether or not it's possible. Simple as that. And uh, I think it's, it, Quite frankly, it's going to be tough, tough job to do it, to get it done. So anyways, that's, that's so my next question though, to you directly to you, as far as the funding for this study, just so everybody knows, how does that work? Yeah, so this actually was budgeted in 22's budget. So we actually had looked at doing this back in 22. Uh, since it wasn't approved, those funds stayed within the EDA fund. So the EDA does have funding capacity right now for this budget. So it comes out of, out of our budget. Correct, it's an okay. EDA funded project. And did you say was budgeted for in 22, so we're not using 2023 dollars? Correct, yeah, there's Those enough that okay. was left over Still in 2022 that okay. moved over. Um, so Bruce, because we have the opportunity with the Lake Association, mm -hmm. and that is more perhaps near term um, than maybe when we started thinking about this concept, is, would you be open to us adding a specific line item as part of the project scope? Would be something around collaboration with the Lake Association on what that transient slip oh, gosh, might yeah. look like and what those plans might look like. I just think having that specifically called out kind of um, kind of reinforces our intent um, mm -hmm. and just kind of spells out that there is some expectation of collaborative work. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the one of the things we've got in there is number two on basic services to facilitate a, you know, a, a working group. And I would think you'd want representation from um, that organization within the working group. And they can share their knowledge. We can get that kind of going right away as part of the effort. I may also add on that. I have a concept from the Lake Association of one of the proposed docs that I can get over to Bruce as well to kind of start that conversation because we talked transient boat subs. Here's what it looks like. Here's what the concept possibly could be to see how that fits in. Because again, the concern I talked to the Lake Association wasn't about the transient boat docks. That wasn't the issue. It was wanting to make sure that the investment that was purchased fit what we were doing. Because like you said, there's a lot of moving pieces with this. So that concept there doesn't help guide that work. Um, I think give him a, a head start in getting that placement. I also just will uh, just kind of address the cost real quick. I know that there's been maybe some weariness. We've done a lot of studies. We've we've paid a lot of money as part of building the um, the downtown plan. But it, you know, in my opinion, this is a kind of our next best step, um, and a major um, kind of. This sets the stage for a lot of recreational activities downtown, and we've said that that's important. And so to take the time to have the study to consider all of the factors 
related to what are we doing with boats? What are we doing with trailer parking? What are we doing with the shoreline? Um, I think sets a strong foundation that if we don't take this step, it, things become very piecemeal and that's where we've gotten ourselves in trouble. So in my, in my opinion, money well spent to just, again, make sure we've got a comprehensive plan that works together. I agree, I think, and I, I have a better understanding now that if the boat launch is moved to a nearby location with the transient dock docking would be maybe in place of where that launch is so that, uh, to Sam's point, you know, providing more opportunity for more people to, to come into town. So, yeah, no, I agree. I mean. It's also interesting about this concept of changing the dock is, I'll just say anecdotally, is I've had this conversation with many community members over time. It usually starts with a, well, is there really any place? And that conversation almost ends up with a, well, what about here, here, and here? I mean, it's not been very often that the answer comes back with a resounding no. And because there seems to be some question, I just think it's worth it for us to evaluate the top five options, have every, all of the information, have that publicly available, and so that when we make the decision, we've got the support of here's why. Here's why we moved it, here's why we didn't move it, here's what was considered, because um, again, what starts off as many times, it seems to be the answer is it needs to stay where it is. I, many times I've found in conversation, we end up with, well, what about another location? Other questions, points of um, conversation? All right, I'm happy to entertain a motion if anyone is ready to make one. Gave fund project 102 for $18,345. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this? Hearing none, all those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Bruce, for being here tonight. Thank you. Yeah. Don't forget your oh, masks. Working on the next step. Oh, yeah. yeah they, I have to take those back to the archive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. <clears throat> all right, next on our agenda this evening, um, Forest Lake Air. Forest Lake Area Chamber of Commerce 2022 year end review. And Nanette, it's good to see you. Glad you're here. Yes, sir. Well, good evening, uh, President Bain, EDA members, and city staff. Um, I have in your packet was my report, my written report, and I'm just going to highlight a couple of things. I'm not going to read this whole thing to you. I think some of the more pertinent pieces of information are, and, and especially for those of you that are new to the um, to the um, EDA, the during COVID we created what was called the Washington County uh, Chamber Coalition, and we work uh, very closely with the Washington County CDA and the workforce. And um, and in that process, we did an extensive business survey, a couple probably. A year and a half ago and from that we have been able to create some great things uh, one of them was a summit that the first one was held um, a couple months ago and we're actually hosting it right here in city uh, city hall next week and so that's a great opportunity it's an educational format and i'm very proud of the work that has um, transpired from that and in addition to that we also have the next step ceo program that was released from that survey and uh, it's not only a very um, robust um, website full of information, but we also have uh, mastermind groups or peer-to-peer um, -peer, uh, you know, groups that are now forming from that. So uh, that was just one of the benefits, I guess you can say, from a global pandemic. And one of the major things that, have that has um, come to fruition in the last year. The other thing that I'm quite proud of as well <clears throat> is that, um, as we, as we were looking to grow and increase our you know, presence and whatnot, I started to find that uh, our volunteer staff was a little bit all over the place. And so I've actually personally trained 28 of our uh, of our volunteers to be what we call certified ambassadors now. So they know how to interact with businesses and they're getting more engaged in doing so. So that was a huge accomplishment in the last half of the last year as well. Uh, let's see, another piece that I was excited about is um, we've always worked with the Forest Lake Times. They do a feature page every time we go and visit uh, businesses, do ribbon cuttings or whatnot, uh, any of our celebrations, they are in the Forest Lake Times. 
but I did work with the Forest Lake low, or the um, the lowdown, and they are pr putting in uh, business spotlights every month, and then every other month a what's new map, and so that's just been great, uh, you know. So and again, if you hear about something, let me know. Um, it's a it's just a great place, and we get lots of traction from that. People are very happy to see uh, some of the things. Boy, people just want to know what's happening, don't they? <laughs> You know, especially if you're on any of those community Facebook groups. Uh, so that was new as well. Another thing that we found was super effective, um, especially during the holiday season, but we will be continue this on is our community events page on our website. And so that's a place where we can put all the things right it doesn't matter if it, if they're chamber members or not and so when we hear about things we go ahead and put them on that community page and during the holiday season of course there are many 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 things and so that was a great um a great opportunity for us to see how that will work and now we'll continue that forward Let's see, the other thing that I, I guess Abby's here, so I wanted to just mention that um, between Dan and Abby and Abby and I, we've met a number of times, um, just probably starting in December. And so we've just been really looking at ways that we could be, we could intentionally collaborate. And so those conversations have been fantastic and uh, things are in the works. And so just really, really happy about that. So those are the main high points that I see uh, and gladly answer any questions if you have any. Thank you, Nanette. Members of the EDA, any questions for Nanette on her year-end review? I don't have a question, just a uh, huge thank you for all the hard work oh. you've been doing. Well, and you've been busy. Appreciate it. <clears throat> it's a monumental job. Thank you. I, you wanna mention upcoming events, Expo? Do you want me to, would you like to, me to just carry on with that now and but then I'll be done? Now. Okay. So yes, we do have a couple of big things, uh, three main things right now that are happening. Uh, we just finished up our uh, collaboration work on the exciting spring fling. Very happy to announce that the City of Forest Lake will be our launch event uh, starting on April 1st. Bolton and Mank is one of our sponsors as well. And so that's, we've extended it to cover two weeks. If you're not sure what it is, we do, uh, we do a social media campaign, print campaign and drive people to local businesses. So we have them hop in, they get a stamp, there's a deal. And then we have a calendar of events, like I said, starting with the um, city's event here on April 1st. There's Easter Bunny uh, pictures and an Easter egg hunt. And so we'll, we'll be building out that schedule now. Now that we have our players, that'll be uh, built out over the next couple of weeks. And then that will lead right into the Lakes Area Expo, which has been on hiatus again for obvious reasons, right? And so uh, the Lakes Area Expo, if you've been a community member for a long time used to be the I don't know I think it was called the home and garden show uh, back in the day and it was at the high school and uh, this we're, we're staying with fourth annual even though we skipped a few years and we did have to cancel it in 2020 this will be the fourth time we do it and it, it's at Maranatha Church and so again it's a big exhibitor event um, that is on April 15th so the exciting spring fling will go right up through the 14th and then we go right into the expo on the 15th. So those are the big uh, community orchestrated types of things that we're doing and then in behind the scenes reworking our website. Thank you Nanette. My question is around what we can we do to help and support, however, I know we've got the um, our partnership agreement on the agenda next so I will hold yep. until, until then but. Thank you for all for all that you do. Any other questions related to Nanette's report? All right, that's a good maybe segue to our next item, which is item eight. And Dan, you did not need any official action for us, did you? On the report? The annual report. No, that was just a that's just a, a creature of this agreement that is before the EDA uh, tonight. Um, to provide a little bit of context to the the uh, business retention and expansion agreement, this is the third renewal of the agreement. We do this on an annual basis to allow us to have to adjust the agreement as needed on an annual basis. Um, and this is the first time that we're actually increasing the amount that we're allocating to uh, the chamber. When we first had this agreement back, I think in the early 2010, 11, I think it was right around 25 or 3,500. We did a market adjustment. We first brought it back in 2020 or 2021. And then last year, instead of increasing the amount, we added that option to allow them to spend $1,500 of 
monies to support the program specifically to BRNE. So we did that little adjustment there, gave it one more year, and then this year we did another market adjustment to 7,500. Um, I will say from a city standpoint, we've seen a lot of benefit from this partnership. Um, there's been a number of, uh, of site selectors or, or people looking for spots within Forest Lake that have come through contacts with the chamber first, or reach out to the chamber first, and that forwards, it, forwards them to us for follow-up. And then vice versa, I've had a couple of businesses reach out for some specific, I have a question on X, Y, or Z at the chamber, I can forward them right over to the chamber. Um, but I also think two things that Annette hit on was the events page and the spotlight and what's new parts that she's been getting out to the papers has been a huge gap in what we've needed. Um, I know like those papers have reached out to us and saying, hey, what's new in your local business community? Well, since we don't license our businesses, we may not know what the newest business is, but Nanette has a really good idea of what's coming in and out of Forest Lake. So it's been a huge resource for us to say, call the chamber for that, that, part, that uh, partnership. So that's been a, a very good partnership for us. Um, what we're proposing tonight is to increase the 2023 business retention and expansion agreement from uh, 5,000 to 7,500. Uh, overall, the agreement to deliverables are going to remain the same this year. We're not making any substantial changes to deliverables. It seemed to work out last year. And again, uh, from both you know, perspectives, it doesn't see, see the need for substantial changes there. Uh, we're also keeping in the um, option to allow for an additional $1,500 for out-of-pocket expenses. So if the chamber launches a very business retention and expansion project that's very specific, that's sort of outside their normal scope of what they would do, they can, she can come to the EDA pre-launch and ask for the funds to be allocated. So again, this is not something that there's going to be a bill at the end of the year. We do have to pre-authorize those funds. Um, that is um, included in uh, this agreement as well. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much a cookie cutter agreement from last year. Uh, get a renew, we'll bring this back at the end of 23 uh, for review and see if you want to renew it for 24. Uh, that annual review seems to be working out pretty well. It allows us that flexibility of allowing us to change as needed based on what we're seeing out in the business community. So with that, happy to answer any questions the EDA may have regarding the agreement. Thank you, Dan. Members of EDA, questions on the agreement? History, scope, tracing. Yep, I have no problem with the agreement because it's been working. But Dan, would you mind just kind of going over I'm a local business or, you know, how do I apply for this money? How, how, how do we get that word out to folks that or well, for this business? Uh, uh, oh, this is the specific agreement that we have with the chamber that she that they do some of the they do the outreach to the business community on behalf of the city. So yeah, okay. Yeah, this is separate than the commercial improvement incentive one, which I'll get to in just a minute after this. But that's part of the outreach I shall do is that if a business comes in and is looking for financing, for example, or they have an exterior improvement, then that can be the one that then goes out as part of their ambassador residence saying the okay. city has these just, programs available. I just want to make sure everybody understood, you know, yep. what I, what I, <clears throat> I, I just have a question a little bit off topic. What exactly is our 2023 budget for the EDA? That is a great question. Can we table that until, um, if we can maybe do a quick update on staff update, otherwise, could we actually maybe it's even better place at our next EDA meeting, just do a full board budget walkthrough? Yep. Let's do that. Let's, I will, let's get, I, let's I give will. give it the time it's due. Um, it's not a big budget, so it won't take a ton of time, <laughs> but at least we can talk through like just some, mech, some basic kind of structure things of the EDA, scope of work, um, work plan, budget, maybe just that administrative review at our next meeting. Yep, can I do. think it's worth a separate agenda item. That said, you're probably, we're asking you to vote on budget related items. Does somebody have like a quick off? Is it 150? 150 and roughly at this point, this budget allocation was figured in on the initials, I think Rough math, about half that budget covers staff and operational costs, and then there's some allocations for study. There's some allocations for the capital downtown, or the capital incentive improvement program that businesses can apply for, and there's also some dollars that are allocated for study in there. So there's there's a little bit of flexibility in terms of what those actually line up at the end of the year in terms of how this goes. But what's being presented tonight has been budgeted for, and the EDA also has some fund balance to where if there is an opportunity that comes forward for you know, a great partnership or a great opportunity. There is an opportunity to always use fund balance as well. But what we have here is, is budgeted within the operations budget for the EDA for 23. 
other questions? I um, just a quick comment. I appreciate that you've had some um, conversations and some addition, maybe broadening of scope of collaboration related specifically to events. I think that's just an area that we can continue to does not make sense for the city to have an event track and the chamber to have an event track. We're going after the same target audience. Let's bring those things together. And if that's an area where we expand the agreement in the future, um, if that alleviates some staff time here and gives us better focus, I would support it. So. Um, Anything else? I, I know that the wheels are well underway for that, but it's good to see. All right, any other questions? I am ready for a motion if anyone's ready to make one. Move the 2023 agreement with the Forest Lake Area Chamber of Commerce for 7,500. There's a motion, is there a second? I'll second it. We have a motion <clears throat> and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those favor all those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And motion is passed. All right. Um, other city updates, Dan or Patrick? I just have a couple. Um, speaking of next meeting, uh, one of the things that is coming up is officer elections for the EDA. Um, so I kind of wanted to get one meeting done with the current with new EDA members. And we'll do that at, a, at a, probably the next meeting as well as going through the kind of the administrative housekeeping, sort of the budgetary stuff, sort of just sort of an overview of the EDA as an organization as well at the next meeting. Uh, open to business, uh, the partnership that Washington County CDA has um, is resuming their office hours here in Forest Lake. They'll be back up here one Tuesday a month to allow for local businesses to meet directly with Tyler from open to business. Um, they also have some new loan programs that they're gonna be able to offer local businesses for gap financing interest rates are a little bit better than right now more competitive than what banks are able to offer um, they've kind of moved away from some of the grants that they were doing when the COVID dollars were out there so they kind of moved more into gap financing on the loan side um, but they do have some new programs that there he's Tyler is actively promoting out with the business community as well he also forwarded me a bunch of ads that I can start plugging into our Facebook and social media as well to get people aware that there are programs out there for local businesses and just for all the new EDA members, Open to Business is a consulting service that Washington County uh, sponsors that allows local businesses free of charge to go get free business consulting work. Um, can do some gap financing if you're doing a project. Could do some advice um, if you're looking to expand business planning, et cetera. All confidential and it's all uh, free service to all the uh, businesses who want to apply for it. So it's been well received here and I'm glad to hear Tyler's coming back up here on Tuesdays to start uh, resuming office hours. Um, the capital incentive improvement program, the new, it's the updated downtown facade program that we had. The paperwork is now live and up to date on the Invest in Forest Lake website. So all the application materials and the policy are there. So if businesses are looking to apply, those application is live right now. I have also sent it out to a handful of app or, or businesses who have requested it. So I have been starting to get that back out in the community. And I had a frequently asked question sort of marketing material on my old computer that when I transferred to my new computer, I can't find it. And so I will try to get that out as well, but that is getting uh, created as well for the marketing side of it. So those materials are now live and up to date. And the final thing I have is for the Headwaters 123 parcel, uh, Dan Peterson, the broker that we had is no longer with CBRE, he moved on. So we have a new listing agent, which is Brian Pankratz. And Brian's focus is more on the commercial and business park kind of development side of the world. Um, so we're looking to kind of rework our marketing materials to kind of reflect his expertise in business park development. Um, but it's still also going to be kind of co-marketed in technology as well. So he's just kind of adding another set of ponds for us to put that um, property in as well. So uh, everything else with CBRE looks good. So he's uh, excited to kind of take it and see what happens with in the uh, commercial and industrial side as well. How much, how much time is left on that listing agreement? It was just renewed in January. Okay. So we have a one year on that. And that, that's a one year agreement. So every year we can renew it. Um, but there is an out, an opt out clause. If we find out that this is not working out from a relationship standpoint, we do have the ability to opt out of that. For the, of that. I think it's either a 30 or 60 day written notice. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. And so for future agenda time for the EDA, we should just do a review with the um, ED, current EDA of what the parcel is, how we acquired it, what our current marketing plan is, um, types of projects that have been considered. 
um, we should take this to an overall. We've done a number of um, site specific studies and investments that we should kind of just cover just where we are on that project would be good. And all with the goal of when we have a decision to consider, we want everyone to just be well placed with the right context to make a good decision. So. Can I ask you a question regarding the incentive uh, program? You said you've reached out to a couple of businesses I, and I don't know how big of a budget is set aside for that. I, I think I've read that the, they cap at 5,000 you know, per business, but um, is there a thought in reaching out to either through your services or through the city to businesses to for awareness campaign? Yeah, that was part of, you know, so there was a two phase. We had to get the, the policy got approved and then it was starting to work on the application materials, making sure all those frequently asked questions. And once all that kind of core stuff was done, yeah, then actively marketing out to let the businesses know that it, it, it is available. Because um, when we first launched this program back in 15, 16, I mean, oh. it was a while ago. There was sort of an initial blitz that brought some applications in, but then it sort of has kind of inked along at just a couple a year, one a year, two a year. Um, and part of that reason was the original policy had the application, you had to spend $50,000 to apply for it. So that entrance point was fairly high. That's been adjusted now, so it's 10% up to $5,000 total. So you can, those smaller projects do qualify now. And we've also expanded the area. So we're let that, so it's not just downtown anymore, it's basically all commercial properties within the city. So we'll have a marketing campaign as well when everything is finalized. All right, Dan, anything else? That's all I have. Patrick, Gabby, anything else? No, I'm good, thank you. All right, um, we don't, and Dan, I miss, what you, the information you gave us on the open for business was the Washington County update. I just wanna make sure I'm not. Yeah, I had nothing else specific else. from Chris on, on that. All right, we are at the Can end. I make, just, yeah, I, you know, I didn't mention this, but I didn't really tell you I want, I want you to be excited about this because the uh, Optimize Your Business Summit that we are hosting with the CDA and what's next uh, CEO, um, it's, we're actually bringing five facilitators. This is the program that's gonna be here next Thursday. And I believe we're max capacity, which Karen is why I was asking the size of that room. And so very excited. The first time we did it, we had 30 people and I think we're gonna be well up to 50. So um, I'm mulling around here next Thursday. Excellent. Any other questions, updates? You're at the, oh, go ahead. Just a comment. Um, if any of you have not looked at the Chamber of Commerce, Commerce website lately, take some time and take a peek. It's really a lot of information in that, oh, in the website. In our website? Their newsletter. Oh, in the newsletter, yeah. So many of you are on there. If you'd like to be added to the, the we have a weekly e-news and that's where you know, so, you know, if there's something right now that people need to know about, we send out e-blasts or e-news. And so if you'd like to be added to that distribution list, uh, you can let me know. And Ryan's got an update. Uh, excuse me, I should note uh, for the new members of the EDA here, uh, welcome. And on uh, Monday, February 27th, uh, Washington County will be here for a public open house for County State Aid Highway 32 or 11th Avenue, the road that kind of goes by the Winnick property and then eventually merges into the bridge. They're gonna be here discussing the project improvements that are planned for 2026 there. The other county road that's in town, they're having a project plan for 2024. There's gonna be significant pedestrian improvements with these two projects. This one obviously is very of high importance, very tight footprint, but with you got the density of the residential homes on the south side and all the apartment buildings on the north, us being able to connect that from a pedestrian walkability the Hard Creek Trail and Everton Avenue and other internal uh, sidewalk projects that the city has done, that's gonna obviously make it easier for people to get from quarters of living to some commercial properties, you know, right up here off of Centennial in that area too. Not, you know, I know it's outside the downtown area, but we got businesses other where too, but just as we continue to build that network out with the two county projects. And then I'll just hit quickly up the MnDOT project. The city's working very closely with MnDOT on a 2025 project from the Divergent Diamond to the first roundabouts, and that'll uh, include a pedestrian facility, a trail on the south side of Highway 97. So 
on those three projects alone, just the walkability in town will significantly increase and that hopefully gets people to some of our businesses or events much easier if they don't have vehicle uh, transportation modes, so. What time is the meeting on Monday? Sorry, good catch. You were, <laughs> someone was listening, <laughs> I'm just kidding. 4.30 to 6.30, so it's right before the city council meeting. Obviously the county will stick along around longer to answer any questions, but we'll have to come back down and start our meeting here at seven that night too. All right, any other updates? We're at our end of our planned agenda. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Mm. Motion, is there a second? A second. Motion and a second. All those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed and we're adjourned. Thank you everyone, have a great evening.